Hello, everybody. Welcome to GoGo -Go World GGW Sharks 35th. This is the final Sharks of the year, and it's been a blast for the past year uh, we were doing these events. So, guys, we have almost 5,000 people participated so far, and we are doing this event every uh, almost every two weeks, like twice a month, and we have hundreds of people RSVPing every uh, single event. We are so grateful for all your love, support, and uh sharing all this information uh, on your social networks uh, we are grateful to all the investors participated we actually have real investments happening through this event and we're really excited about that so please uh, keep us uh, sh keep sharing with us uh, information about how you got funded and with all, with all that i don't want you guys to wait uh, this is a christmas time it's gonna be a fun show enjoy it and uh, i'm gonna give you a few details about google Go world and our latest details, introduce the sharks, and we'll let you pitch right away. Now, what is GoGobo World? GoGobo World is the platform for founders and investors, where investors can find and scout startups from uh, uh, and find find relevant uh, founders by their criteria. Founders can find investors, warm investors, faster because the system has the intelligence in it. Uh, how does it work? Each of you, like investor or startup, has a one pager. Like you may imagine a LinkedIn where you have your own uh, business page or company page, but uh, it comes with intelligence. Everyone who comes on, on your page within the platform or outside the platform can apply uh, to connect and the system will process this request and decide on your behalf whether it's a fit connection to you or not, saving you a lot of time. Now we live in the era where uh, uh, investors get spammed by many start by startups every day, uh, and it's not relevant um, uh, like for most of the investors. Like 99% of uh, cold connect requests or uh, cold finding requests are not relevant. That's what investors are saying, and st our startups are struggling to get uh, uh, attention of investors. So. This is intelligence, making sure that we uh, investors can decide faster, we verify everyone, and so you guys connect with relevant people. So how does it work? It's really powerful. With apply for funding button on, on, on cluster page, uh, startups uh, answer a few key questions we want them to answer, and then we compare this against the criteria of the investor, and then, and only then, we inform investors if there is a uh, uh feed of specific uh funding request or specific deal and then we on uh, we inform an investor then this is how a startup benefit because uh, they don't have to uh, spend time on those investors who are not interested in them and uh, the system doesn't focus on only warm investors and this is how you get a match within the platform of already verified people and in your own network and and so th this is this is how we call it relevant startup and investor matchmaking. And when we say relevant, we really mean it. Uh, we built a real entire technology around this, so we have powerful uh, filters and powerful algorithms that are taking a decision and building you lists of those uh, real people who approach you, and as if there was someone sitting and pre-selecting, analyzing and uh, uh, cherry picking the best ones. And so it will be uh, in a separate list of relevant. So then you don't have to spend time on manual work. As if you're a founder, if you're an investor, it works uh, for you both. Now, that's it. Uh, it's GGW Shark 35th. This is the final show of the year. And I'm super excited to present our uh, Sharks. And we have, a, a, as always, we have a honor, honor panel of great investors. And uh, we have um, Jichao Lee from uh, uh, Bay Angels, and he's an angel investor. Connor Anthony, investor from BDF, BDF Ventures. Uh, Aruna Merdigeva from Venture Partners at Sanctor Capital. Arpit Garg uh, from RAS Capital. And Rhys uh, Schroeder, from, uh, an investor from Allstate uh, Strategic ventures i'm super excited to have these investors with us this uh, the investors you will be speaking today and i'll let investors introduce themselves in a few seconds and finally let's make some noise today take screenshots of uh, of uh, this event and share it on social media on linkedin tag investors tag us and uh, if you would have any questions to me or my team this is our website gogobo.world and our email info at gogobo.world with that said I'm done, and this is the time where we will 
use our sharks, investors, and I suggest we start with Arpit Garg. Um, uh, I will give uh, 30 seconds to each investor, so let's get into it. Arpit, please introduce yourself. Thank you so much uh, for having me here, Daniel. Uh, super excited. This is my second shark event. Uh, I'm a general partner at Res Capital. Res Capital invests in early stage companies, C to Series A. Uh, we generally have some sort of revenue and MVP product ready. And we have a team of about 50 people uh, who come in and help the company with the growth aspects of it, whether it relates to public policy, government grants, uh, grants, subsidies. Uh, we, we have lawyers, bankers, operators, a, a very wide gamut of investors. We've invested in some companies, including Figma, uh, Rippling, Brex in the past. Uh, we have a fund is about uh, 30 million target uh, and, the, and pre predominantly investing through our SPV right now. And uh, we are focused on AI, medtech, prop tech, and fintech right now. Happy to be here. Exciting to have you with us again. Zichao Li, your turn. Oh, hey, uh, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, this is also my second time joining the event. Uh, it's really been nice uh, attending and uh, meeting all the people here. So I'm Chi Chao. I'm, uh, I'm actually coming from the tech field where I work at Apple and IBM over the past decades uh, to work on chip design and also hardware design, including software to hardware conversion and accelerate to AI. So that is my circle of competence. And uh, 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 apart from that, I'm also a member of Bay Angel Deal Flow Committee. I was uh, aiming to do sourcing due diligence and contract negotiations. So we also um, uh, aim to connecting investors and founders and cre uh, create this ecosystem so that everybody benefits. So in terms of investment itself, because of my background uh, in tech companies, I'm actually more comfortable with uh, hardware design as well as machine learning. So I'm seeking a motivated founder and plus a team that is deal with a real problem, not, ju not just uh, some wrapper to fix some things, uh, can also have st uh, scalable solutions uh, in those areas mainly. So I'm aiming for pre-seed and seed round. And uh, uh, plus on that, I need some customer adoptions and revenues just to as uh, evidence of uh, traction. So, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for inviting me again. Exciting, great to have you as uh, Chao. Uh, Rhys Schroeder, you are participating several times already and happy to have you again. Yeah, this is um, this is my third time and I'm uh, really uh, honored to be here again. And uh, hello to everybody out there. Um, so I am an investor with Allstate Strategic Ventures. Uh, we are the corporate venture capital arm of Allstate Insurance Company, which is one of the largest property and casualty insurers in North America. Um, we're a Series A through C investor, but I like to meet companies early and develop a relationship as they uh, as they develop. Um, the areas that we invest in are everywhere from enterprise SaaS to deep uh, to deep tech like AI, machine learning, data and video analytics, automation, things like that. Um, mobility and telematics for sure, uh, prop tech. Um, as well as um, we we do we do invest in climate tech and um, we also invest in frontier tech like things like uh, blockchain and uh, quantum computing. So that's a quick overview of us, and uh, really happy to uh, be here. Yeah, happy to have you. Thank you, uh, Rhys. Connor, uh, please go next. Hey, everybody. I'm Connor Anthony. I'm with VDev Ventures. It's my first time here. You may have seen a couple of my colleagues in the panel. We look to invest across a number of different industries, but B2B SaaS is really our sweet spot. We invest from pre-seed through Series A, sometimes Series B if appropriate. Our average check size is a pretty big range, 300,000 to 3 million. We try to keep an open mind with where we can invest, but one key thing we focus on is B2B companies. And that's, that's because our value add is based on bringing some tools in the lead generation space to our portfolio companies. And the, the data set we've built out over the years really is baked within B2B. So really eager to hear all of your pitches. And you know, if we're not a great fit, we'd still love to connect. And yeah, thanks for having me today. Thank you for coming. Great, uh, great to have you. And yes, the Ventures have uh, had already some people participated before and 
It's always a pleasure to have you guys with us. Aruna, uh, you will be opening our global uh, GGW Sharks, uh, the final pitch event uh, uh, of the year. So no pressure on you. Just uh, say a few words about yourself. <laughs> it's a joke, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. My name is Aruna. So my background is four years in corporate finance, three years in enterprise sales, then venture capital. And then I was a co-founder of a venture-backed company where I led fundraising, go-to-market, and sales strategies. And then last year, I joined a venture fund named Sanctuar Capital and the fund invest as a venture partner uh, in the fund invest in gaming. So also I do uh, advise startups and I run a community of founders and investors in New York and we host a events twice a, uh, a month in person. So if you're interested, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Sounds exciting. Uh, what a great panel we have today. And this is the final show of the year. And with long due, let's get started. The first person to present is Jim Mulford from Exchange. Uh, Jim, are you ready? I am ready. Right. So let's uh, let's get started. You got two minutes and I'm going to put you on the stage right now. Just give me a second. Here you go. OK, you got two minutes. All right. Thank you. Hello, investors. I'm Jim Mulford, president and CEO of Acquire Exchange. Our team has developed, tested, and piloted a platform for the real-time issuance and redemption of cash offers and rewards across multiple markets. We will be introducing this platform to the mobile and video gaming market in the first quarter of 2024 as Sweepify. This will be the first sweepstakes engine that converts free-to-play game tournaments and challenges to free to win games with cash prizes and rewards. This is a potential unicorn opportunity that combines the popularity of sweepstakes competition with the massively growing mobile and video gaming market. Our easy to implement API allows game publishers to take advantage of our offering, but without having to change their games or existing tournaments and challenges. We do the heavy lifting of managing the tournaments from end to end including the required KYC, uh, FinTech, operational support, data analytics, and of course, winner determination and payouts. Through our prior multi-million dollar investment, the platform has already been developed and extensively tested in the retail market in partnership with MasterCard. We've now ported the platform to the gaming market, conducted end-to-end -end testing, and are ready for an MVP launch. We're currently seeking and closing $500,000 through a Reg D 506B accredited investor offering via a convertible note with attractive discounts to a future seed round. This round will be used to launch our game market MVP and prepare for rapid scale in 2024. Our two to $5 million price seed round will fuel rapid growth. Six early stage funds have already expressed interest in our seed round post MVP launch. Thank you for listening, and I invite you to connect with me to learn more about our opportunity. Thank you so much, Jim. Uh, dear Sharks, uh, do you have any questions? Anyone uh, would be interested to connect uh, with Jim? Who wants to start? I, I can start things off. So we as a firm actually have a, a product market fit threshold of around half a million in recurring revenue. I'd say it's a soft floor, but that's kind of where we we stand. So I'd love to stay in touch as you do move past that MVP. And I think the pitch was really well done. So great job. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, we are certainly actively connecting with uh, seed round investors, which we know many are. And and this is primarily a uh, early stage, high net worth family office. Um, you know, jumping in. Our revenues are you know while we've generated about two hundred thousand in revenues, that's been in pilots. So we consider ourselves a pre revenue. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we have one shark in, right? Uh, am I, did I get you correctly, Connor? So we connect you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Any Thanks, Connor? Look so forward to it. Any other sharks? Anyone else interested to say something? Okay. Uh, so thank you so much, Jim. Appreciate that great presentation. And uh, thank you. Start. All right. And the next person is to present is Gaurav Dudhoria. Uh, Gaurav, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. Then let me find you on the stage. Just give me a second. Okay. I don't see you. Um, all right. So uh, you got two minutes, uh, and please, you may start. 
Great. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. Hey there. Uh, my name is Gaurav. Uh, I'm the founder of, and CEO of Mammoth Analytics. And um, at Mammoth, our goal is to accelerate the pathway to insights. And we think of data as a journey. And at the end of the journey, you have um, insights, which is what all companies want. And the beginning, uh, data in most organizations is messy. It's uh, siloed. Um, and to go from data in this raw state all the way to insights, it's a lot of effort. Um, it takes a lot of time, the high technical hurdles. And um, in fact, most 80 to 90% of the time is spent in data prep. Uh, very little time is left for analysis and insights. At Mammoth, we reduce that 80 to 90% to 5% or less. But more importantly, what we allow for is the right people in the organization, the knowledge workers, the business analysts, to be empowered with decision making without any um, dependency on engineering. And so we are seeing success out of this. Uh, we have some great clients. We have Starbucks, Bacardi, Arla, um, Campari. And uh, we have a partnership with Nielsen. It's a, it's a, it's a huge opportunity, an unsolved problem. Um, as of last uh, couple of months ago, we closed Mitsubishi Financial, which is this, a huge bank. Uh, so what we were discovering in the in the banking industry that the back office is manual and um, and error prone, uh, the processes there. And uh, with MUFG in, in Japan at the HQ, we are solving a um, a KYC problem that is unsolved. They've been trying for years, but we're the first solution or the only solution that's been able to do it. And um, we've just finished the first project and the next couple of phases involve rolling out our product into multiple regions. So we're very excited about that. So we are um, raising 3 million uh, out of that, about a third is committed. And so if you're interested, we'd love to connect and chat, happy to show you the product and tell you more about the journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Sharks. Any questions to go up? Anyone wants to connect? Oh, I'm, 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 go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead, Connor. No. It, it was just around your your customers. So you mentioned some really impressive names at the enterprise level. Do you have appetite as you move downstream for smaller companies, maybe the SMB segment? Yeah, we have. In fact, we started off with the focus on SMBs, and that's where the eventual growth is. Uh, this the, the whole enterprise world uh, is just a sort of a means to an end, and it's been serving us really well. So. Got it. It makes sense. And this is right up our alley, so I'd love to connect. Perfect. Thanks. One shark is in. Anyone else? Ji Uh, Yeah, I think Connor asked a similar question I was asking. I was wondering, like, which one do you focus, the enterprise level or the small level, uh, small, medium business level? But you seem to answer that already. But one thing on top of that is, I'm not completely following. I, I, I think we interrupted earlier before. I couldn't recall, but I'm not fully uh understanding what stage are you in seems like you already have the product you already have some of the tractions uh but what uh, can you give a quick highlight what stage are you in like are you having any like additional tractions on pipe or any revenues yeah in fact we're we're over the last couple of months we've, we've upticked quite a bit so um back in 2022 we were at 300k this year we're gonna we're gonna close close to a million in revenues um and uh just in terms of pipeline just because we've kind of unlocked the financial services sector it's looking it's looking really promising so and just to answer really quick on the enterprise versus sme world what we're actually doing at the enterprise world is we're plugging into the at the departmental level so it's not at the centralized level it's more decentralized so it's almost like the at least from a sales standpoint it's almost like an sme sale Okay. Okay. In that case, I would also love to follow up and just understand a little bit more. Great. Sounds exciting. Who shark saying? What about the rest? Oh, we have Aruna and Riz. Okay. Aruna, would you go next? Yeah, sure. At this time, how much money did you raise? Uh, you raise? So, so it's about two and a half million. We've raised over like just through high networks, uh, bootstrapped. Um, so nothing institutional yet. Mm, and at what valuation um, you want to raise the second round? I'm going to leave it up to the market, but uh, the, the latest close uh, the, uh, was uh, the, the cap was 
at um, at twelve million. So the the convertible cap was at twelve million. Pretty uh, much. Okay, got it. And uh, just curious, who are the players on the market who you're competing with? So you know we we have so we're in the data ops space, and there are actually there's a lot of competition in the data ops space. But the key difference is they are focused. All, all of our competitors are focused on on empowering engineering. Uh, we are focused on empowering the business analysts. And and what we've seen is that we're our true competition is Excel and spreadsheets. So so all the fringe work that's done on the Excel spreadsheet world, which actually shouldn't be done there. Uh, and is done by the the, the non tech folks. That's where we uh, play a, a real role. Mm -hmm. And how did you acquire your current customers? Uh, we have a partnership with Nielsen, so that's one. I mean, it's basically mainly two partnerships. We we have a very limited sort of a team. Uh, in fact, part of the raise is because we have a, our sales is sort of a bottleneck. We're just one salesperson, so we've been doing it through partners, but we're unlocking some additional channels as we speak. Is it because you already have existing network or you are now doing outbound uh, sales? Uh, right now we are doing both outbound inbound and the, I, th I think that, that's going to play out over the next couple of months. But so far, like 90% has been through partners. So Nielsen, for example, is a partner, warm intros. It's, it's, it's outbound. It's So far it's been completely outbound, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Reese. Yeah, so just you know, quick one. So we have seen actually, you know, several companies that do what I call democratizing data analytics, uh, and it's an interesting space. I'd really just like to understand what's really differentiated about your technology versus others. Yeah, Reese, we you know, as I was mentioning, we look at the entire journey. We don't look at one piece of the puzzle. So if you look at the competitors. Um, uh, in terms of democratization, a lot of focus on insights or just how do you create graphs and charts and things like that. So that's like at right the end of the of that journey. We focus on everything before, like each step of the way. So um, it's no code data ingestion, no code storage, no code discovery, no code transformation, no code uh, pushing out data to various places. If you look at it, look at it comprehensively. There's no other solution that does no code across. Um, all these different components, and specifically around data transformation. Thanks. Yeah, I'd like to uh, follow up. Fantastic. Okay. So we have three sharks are in. Okay, uh, great job. Um, uh, are Pete uh, 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 just making sure that? Yeah, I would love to learn more about the team. Uh, you know, no code is something I've been seeing a lot of activity in, in several applications to our firm. Uh, but well, what's your what's the past record of the team? Have you have you worked on something similar in the past? How how big is the team? The team right now is is almost about thirty people. Um, and no, we we don't have. I mean, this is sort of unprecedented in a way that what we're what we're building. There's a lot of experience in the world of data. There's a lot of uh, experience in the world of enterprise. But whatever we're offering is is it's a new solution. Um, so there is no precedence for it. So the only my, my answer is we we kept failing, so that's how we learned. So. Fantastic! Thank you so much. I'd love to connect. Fantastic! So we have uh, uh, four sharks interested to connect. Uh, almost jackpot, and uh, we are trying to get a jackpot every uh, jackpot every one. So yeah, we'll get there. Thank you, Gaurav. And the next person to present is Denise Utila. Denise, are you ready? You got two minutes. Go for it. Yes, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Denis Kutilov, and I'm the founder of View Through Video Startup. Uh, we are targeting 60 million video creators worldwide to revolutionize the process of gathering and choosing materials of video creation. Our AI-based service helps find specific content and scenes in unsorted video files on users' local and cloud storages. Uh, to share them immediately or to use them instantly in ongoing projects. We started this project as a solution for our own video production, and then we realized that uh, it would be beneficial for the whole video creation industry, to professionals, influencers, and even regular people. For example, what if I ask you to show me a video of your kid riding a bike for the first time? 
how much time would it take you uh would you spend to find me to sorry to find it and you can only imagine the scale of this challenge for professionals so we plan to reach uh two million users in five years with the 95 dollars annual sub subscription which gives us an annual turnover for approximately 180 millions uh we expect break even point at the second year of sales with 300,000 subscribers and now we have uh, now we have an online uh, version of our service ready uh, and we conduct uh, that will conduct search uh, on users Google disks so we plan to start sales in January and uh, now we on pre-seed stage and we're searching for five hundred thousand dollars to start the developing of multi-platform application and uh, marketing so uh, if you uh, are interested in, uh, in in our project so contact me and uh, I will be very grateful for any uh, feedback on on the on our project thank you right on time thank you so much Denise uh, dear dear sharks dear investors what do you would say uh, I actually have two questions. The first one is pretty basic. I'm not really fully understanding what your problem definition is. So I'm trying to catch up. Maybe I missed the important part. But my understanding is you were trying to, uh, uh, you were trying, you're basically a search engine trying to get image and video that users were curing about more faster and easier, right? Yes. The, um, uh, for example, if you are, um, uh, editing some video and you have to put here some for example scenes where the car is drifting so we have to search for it and uh, with our uh, service you can simply find it uh, in your database and uh, put this moment from the video from another video right on your timeline so that is the point uh, and uh, if you are professionally if you are a professional editor or you or you are some kind of uh, video blogger you spend a lot of time most of time you spend finding some content and uh, and organizing it to use it in your uh, video creation uh, process so so we, we are eliminating all this uh, more than a half uh, of time for creating a video okay I, like i'm just trying to see what is the special uh points uh regarding to the product like seems like uh like for the image both image and video there's image recognition uh, recognition and video you also have, can do similar stuff to to add like, like mega tags on top of the image and video so that you can just treat it as a database and curate it whenever ready right so like if there's anything special on top of just uh uh like adding tag and curate for users because that can be easily replicated by anyone else right Yes, we are going now. We are uh, searching for um, uh, scenes or specific content that we describe in uh, in in a query. So, and uh, we are planning to do some uh, search uh, based on texts or, or on text on text um, description of uh, the whole video. So we are planning it, but uh, now we are searching only for uh, scenes. So, in, and if you want to find some scene like a uh, uh, kid blowing out candles, so you can find it right away. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like one last thing is, uh, I, uh, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but at the beginning you mentioned you already have 60 million users. Is that right? Or oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's we are targeting to get 60 million users, and we have some uh, research, uh, not not from us, but from from the market several researches that shows us that uh, 60 million 60 million people consider themselves like uh, video creators so they are uh, they uh, are okay yeah, they okay. are um, experiencing th these problems and uh, we have a research from uh, adobe corporation uh, that shows us that about 25 million people is already using um, professional uh editing uh programs okay so uh the the the, the audience is quite huge all right so uh, the final question uh to the sharks uh, is there anyone interested to connect with denise uh, to explore more uh in this project 
Okay. Denise, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, please share your information in the chat, especially your GW profile, and we have more investors in the chat. And we look forward to seeing you on the next event. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, the next presenter is Alex Schaufhausen. Alex, uh, are you there? You ready? Yep. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. You, you got it. You got two minutes. Okay. For it. Cool. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex. Schaffhausen, uh, most of my career has actually been spent in the entertainment industry. Um, and now I have built a very cool and unique fintech platform called AchievePay. So we at AchievePay focus specifically on ACH payments. ACH payments are the one of the most used payment rails in the United States. They process $76.7 trillion worth of payments last year, and they're free, usually free to both send and receive. But the problem with ACH payments is they often take two to five business days to clear, which cause cash flow constraints for business businesses and uh, consumers alike. So we at Achieve Pay have figured out a way to make ACH payments settle instantly. So instead of two to five business days, it usually takes to clear. It takes about thirty seconds or thirty minutes or less. Um, we have proprietary technology to do this. We have two banks. Um, that we're sounding up to connect to the payment rails within the United States. And we have four or three pilot customers and soon to have four um, starting next year. We are a subscription-based business as well as transaction fees. Uh, and we are raising a $1.5 million seed round to help with our go-to-market strategy. So that's it. Sounds exciting. Great pitch. What questions do we have? Anyone? What, who was the start? I, I can chime in. Can you talk a little more about the the business model? I know you mentioned the the technology and the problem you're solving really well. Who are you actually selling to, and, and what does that process look like so far? Yeah, uh, good question. So, um, of the three and soon to be four pilot customers, they were all introduced through word of mouth, and that's how we will likely do this for the first you know three to six months until we build our sales funnel. Our target customers are small to mid-market businesses of 100 people or less um, who feel the, I guess, cash flow constraints of waiting for their payments to either settle in their own bank accounts or they need to speed up the payments to their uh, vendors. We will also target like fintechs uh, because we do have a white label solution for this. Uh, the issue with them is it's a longer product-driven sales cycle. So we're beholden to their product and engineering team rather than their business development department. Got it. Got it. Great. And are you leveraging block blockchain technology in this? Or I didn't hear the, the buzzword. Uh, yeah. So no, no, we're not. Um, we thought about it and we might in the future, but given our banking partnerships we currently have and some of our customers, like we want to stay away because that would scare our banks. Right. So we actually are a web to only platform because, you know, I don't personally have a problem with crypto, but there's a lot of people that still do for different reasons. And so we're staying away uh, for now. Okay, final question. Is it a transactional business model or a subscription? Yeah, so it's both. So we have a $500 per month per seat subscription fee for our SMBs. And to white label, it will be about $5,000 per month. And then we also have a half a percent or less transaction fee. It depends on the customer, the amount, and payment rail that they use. Awesome. Would love to connect. This is up our alley. Thank you. Cool. Yep. Awesome. One shark is in. Is uh, uh, yeah, I have a... I still have one quick thing, like if I can jump in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the quick question is, I I may like other investor jump in if uh it's easier. It just like I wanted to understand in terms of from other investor perspective or from your perspective, if the problem is actually a real problem, like because on my side you mentioned two to five business days to transfer the fund. I actually did another round done this morning, and I initiate the fund. And on my side, it takes no more than two days. You really take only one business days. I don't know if I'm using a different bank or anything, but like I haven't seen cases more than two days. If there's yeah, any okay. issue that business have to be done within 30 minutes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Yeah. So two to five days in general of what our like research has showed us and what we've talked to. Some banks do one day for ACH. Some banks even do in like same day ACH. The thing is instant ACH, we define it as 30 minutes or less. So it's an instant payment platform. So yes, in general, like, you know, big businesses, they can wait the one, two, three, five, whatever business days it is. But a lot of smaller businesses actually have 
cash flow constraints. One of our pilot customers actually uses Stripe and Stripe Treasury, and they wait six days for one of their clients to send them the money, then they have to send the money to somebody else. So we are reducing that payment processing time by days, almost a week when it's all said and done. So yes, there's a lot of people that feel the constraint and need you know the instant solution versus even one day. They can't wait. Okay, I'm not fully convinced, but I would like to follow up and see, like just okay. to understand it a bit more. Okay, yeah, no problem. I, I can convince say. you. <laughs> uh, and we have our people wanted to say something. Yeah, no, uh, this thing is very close to me because one of the problems that I worked on in my first job at a big bank was very similar to something like this, right? Um, you know, two to three days is generally the ACH period, but for insurance companies and large companies like that, which are working with very big amounts in uh, high transaction volume, it, it it translates into a lot of flow. So even if you have cash for one extra day, the amount you can make just by reinvesting that cash is just enormous. Yes. It's a huge benefit. So one, how much is the volume that you can handle? Do you have a minimum and maximum of the amounts? And secondly, uh, how are you financing those transactions? Are you essentially in an arbitrage business like mm -hmm. do you have a line of credit through a bank yeah how does the model good work? question so today our limit is about 100 grand because it's coming off our balance sheet for certain flows however we are negotiating a line of credit with a bank which i can tell you about privately and it'll be in the 50 to 70 million dollar range and that will be that will raise our limit to a million dollars or more uh and, but it'll be a lot like a line of credit from an intermediate bank and what's your what's your you know, I, I guess pitch to the companies that you're speaking with. Uh, like, oh, who are you targeting? I know you said SMBs and smaller, smaller shops, but but why why not target bigger firms with bigger transaction volumes who can really make use of funds uh, if if you if they receive it even one day ahead of time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, we would absolutely love to have bigger firms on board, but like we're such an early company. My strategy is to get as many customers signed up to show attraction to like to get to a like a point later on where we can get to the bigger companies it's just the bigger companies are a yeah. longer sales cycle and we're trying to get people on quick but yes we absolutely want to do that but that's like part two of our strategy if you will all right so the, the final question is have is there any other sharks willing to connect uh it's uh no okay got it thank you so much uh, RP, I did, do you want to connect or not i just didn't get uh yes please That'll be good. okay perfect all right so three sharks again congratulations alex uh, and please share your details Thank you. in the chat great job and next presenter is andre didenko andre you ready yeah i'm ready okay you got two minutes go for it okay so lawyer is your online app for reviewing contracts designed for rapidly growing small businesses and startups and powered by ai so the problem we solve is that when business is growing, it has more and more deals to close and more and more contracts they need to check and sign. And person who has been responsible for contracts in the company, such as CEO, COO, head of sales, or even an in-house lawyer, is not able to handle a high volume of contracts anymore. So they have either to hire a team of in-house lawyers or to hire a law firm. Both options are usually very expensive for small companies. And what's more important, an average lawyer often slows down or even blocks fast deals and sales, but not accelerates them. So we solve this problem with the app where business can just upload their contracts, they need to sign and check them for their company and market standards with our AI tool. And they can also order review by professional lawyer. So we built a combination of contract automation platform and legal marketplace. And finally, Loy allows to do contract work up to 10 times faster at the same quality level, and businesses can save up to 90% of the legal. So our differentiator is that we focus now only on technology companies and intellectual property law and contracts, and then we're going to expand to other contracts and industries. We have a, a prototype that uh, is generating us active users for uploading check contracts with us, and we have just started to generate the first revenue this month, and we are looking for eight hundred thousand dollars per seed invest. Thank you. Fantastic, great pitch. Dear Sharks, do you have any questions to Andre? 
Anyone? Repeat. I guess I have a, a comment. I, I think it was a really well done pitch. Nice, nice, quick, and uh, concise. I, I think it's a little bit too early for for us, but I'd love to connect and learn a little bit more. I, I think sometimes I'm a better visual learner, so it wasn't quite able to grasp everything you said, but um, I th think it was really well done, and I'd love to stay in touch. Perfect. Yeah, hey. so we have seen similar pretty, I think the space has been growing pretty rapidly. Um, and a lot, lot of VC capital backing this up as well, you know, changing the legal, uh, legal, legal automation industry. So questions for you, I mean, how, how, what is a differentiator for you, say against a couple of other startups I've seen in the space? Um, I know you mentioned IP law specifically, and uh, what what does your team look like on this? Yeah, yeah. Are you guys mostly lawyers? What's your backgrounds? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. About the team, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I'm a lawyer myself. I have a ten plus years legal background as a corporate and contract lawyer. Um, and uh, on the other side, we have a great like IT team with um, AI machine learning engineers. So yeah, that's uh, that differentiates us. Firstly, the second one, yeah, is is um, focusing on IT industry on uh, IP contracts, uh, and the third one is um, that we see our business model uh, not only as a like a contract review app that many competitors build, but we like uh, look uh, more like strategically. And uh, at current stage, our business model is a combination of contract automation app and legal marketplace of professional tone. Oh, okay. So what would be the exact differentiator between your solution and uh, the solution of other competitors? Well, it's difficult to say it exactly because there are many competitors building a bit slightly different things. My horizon for, it, uh, for the last year because the, this uh, AI boom is that uh, they do they do just like a contract review app. So like it's uh, the, when you just uh, put your contract in, in the app and have it reviewed for certain like general legal risks or something like that. Okay, so in 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 this regard, we differentiate uh, from from them based on based on what I just mentioned before. Uh, okay, but um, uh, if uh, to say, if to say like in a different way, like uh, you maybe know like a rocket lawyer, it's an online legal services uh, for businesses and individuals in the US. Okay, so we built like a, like a rocket lawyer for uh, contracts uh, for small businesses. Okay, so if this is the, this is not what we can uh, that you can really find a lot of uh, like many similar ideas uh, like in the market right now. Right, and the final questions I have uh, to the sharks: As uh, anyone uh, except for Connor would like to connect with Andre? Perfect. Thank you, Andre. Please share your DigiDouble profile in the chat. We're moving on and uh, uh, looking forward uh, to to see you again. Uh, so the next one is Samuel uh, uh, at the BC uh, from AI Bank. Samuel, you ready? Yes. You got two minutes. Hello, Sharks. Um, thanks for being here. So, so imagine a world where we can all bank without having to think about transaction charges, commission and fees, and uh, other hidden fees in the banking sector. This is what we are building at AI Bank. AI Bank is a subscription-based digital bank that removes the complexity of transaction and fees, interest charges, and other hidden fees from the entire banking experience and replaces it with affordable subscription that is tied to the need of the users. In the past one year, we've gathered over 4,000 users without spending a dollar on marketing bootstrapped using our credit line product and our P2P uh, committee for remittance. Our credit line product in the last quarter generated over $2.6 million in demand, and our P2P community sent home 650,000 US dollars every single month. In the market in which we are launching, we'll be the first subscription-based bank in the market. And in terms of going to market, we are striking partnership with different companies and different communities 
that has given us access to over 20,000 users who are ready to onboard immediately that we launch. Now, um, we are raising a million dollars to begin this journey of uh, building a differentiated global bank, starting from Africa, connecting other emerging markets like Asia and Latin America, and eventually building a differentiated global bank. The team is filled with um, decades of experience in the banking sector and in scaling fintech applications across emerging markets. In fact, the team has led different diverse mergers and acquisition in the banking sector worth millions of dollars. So we can do this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, a great project. Uh, is there any questions from the sharks? Who wants to start? Yeah, it's uh, like I have a similar question compared to the earlier one from Alex on the fintech one. Is there has to be a pretty heavy regulation on this subject, right? So, how do you ensure the the deposit is safe? Like, uh, are you FDIC insure or like? Maybe you mentioned that I missed it, but how how do you protect the the deposit? So um in in we have the NDIC insurance which comes with uh, which you pay uh, immediately you become a digital bank and you know I've been um, working in helping fintechs acquire the banking license so I mean this is something I I've, I've been doing for the past five years and I've done even this year I've done about three different uh, majors and acquisition for different fintechs who wanted to acquire a banking license in emerging market. So you understand this whole process of getting your license, the whole regulations, the whole, everything that needs to be done. It's the team actually understands this because we do this um, very regularly. The status. Okay, uh, Reese. Yeah, Samuel, just a question. You talked about some of the markets you've initially focused on. Can you talk about what markets are next in your roadmap? Okay, so for now, it's uh, Nigeria we are starting with, which is the home country. Then from there, we're connecting to other um, African countries like um, South Africa and Ghana. Then from there, we're looking at connecting with uh, the Latin Americans. Latin Americans and uh, from there, Asia. Why are we going to emerging markets? This is basically just a revolute, but for emerging markets, subscription-based banking. We don't have it in emerging market, but I mean, this is something you have in Europe. This is something you have in the US because I use revolutes all around. And yeah, that is the market. Exciting. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any other questions or anyone interested to connect with Samuel? Perfect. Damiel, thank you so much. Please share your digital profile. We're moving on and we're approaching the middle uh, of the event. And I'm just so grateful for your uh, great presentation and so many questions from investors. So exciting. We are uh, making it happen for many connections that happen. We, we already have about 10 matches with investors for, by now. Now, the next presenter is uh, Nikolai from Cartomy. Nikolai, you ready? Yes. Yes. Two Hi, everyone. Right. Yeah, uh, my name is Nikolai. I'm from Cartomy Global. Um, let's imagine we all use uh, different bank cards uh, every day uh, for our daily purchases. But these cards only identify us as payers to the bank, not to the retailer. To get uh, any rewards from loyalty programs, we need additional loyalty cards or use other methods to identify us to get bonuses or discounts. Uh, for example, uh, as a customer, I'm one, but have many IDs in different uh, retailers, and I have to carry them around and show them uh, to merchants to receive bonuses. I have to have 100 bonus cards. Um, we have created the Card to Me mobile application where the user registers and receives his code uh, called Card to Me ID. Next, we integrate this ID uh, into retail loyalty programs and the bank card at the same time. This uh, elevates his bank card in the universal loyalty card. We do not change the loyalty programs of retailers, but give uh, the card to me users access to them using their IDs, which is the same for all retailers. One ID for all retailers. Our solution benefits everyone involved in uh, retail sales. 
uh, users get access to multiple loyalty programs. Partner banks get increased sales of uh, their card products. Retailers get up-to-date uh, customer data and uh, a special environment to communicate with them and uh, acquire them. Uh, we have different competitors, uh, loyalty card aggregators and co-branding bank cards, but there is a good demand for our solution from customers. Uh, our monetization is uh, from Visa, uh, international payment system, uh, bank, in-app advertising, and from retailers. We already have uh, generated more than 100K in revenue, uh, attracted more than 200,000 users, and uh, we are uh, operating in three countries. Now we are looking for investments to expand uh, to North America and uh, West Europe. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, dear investors. Any questions from you to Nikolai? Well, is this a US-based company? Um, the uh, headquarter company, yes. Uh, we are registered in uh, Delaware, but operating countries is uh, CIS countries. This is uh, uh, Uzbekistan, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Poland, and uh, Moldova. Oh, okay. I have no idea about the customer in those countries. I have to be out. Okay, sorry. Okay. Any anyone else, Aruna? No, I was just wondering if the founder is in the U.S. or is outside of the U.S. Nikolai, are you guys in U.S. or outside the U.S.? Founders. The main founders team is outside U.S., but uh, sometimes visit. Perfect. All right. And, you, and final okay. question. Thank you. Is there anyone that want to connect with Nikolai? Okay, Nikolai, thank you so much. Uh, please share your uh, contact information here and your profile. And uh, the next person to present is Tori Smith. Tori, uh, are you there? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, my name is Tori, and you've got Chris right behind me. Our little company is called Endiotics, and we actually put tiny little robot pills that swim around inside the human stomach. Uh, so this is a deep tech telemedicine offering. And what makes us unique is that our little robot pills actually swim under their own power. And so we're looking at maybe 100 million hospital visits every year for a normal endoscopy, where we'd have to knock you out and jam a tube into your body. Uh, with PillBot, we're actually just saying you could be at home, you could drink some water, swallow this robot, and have a quick little Zoom call with, with your doctor uh, while they pilot it around in your stomach. So we're about five years old. We've raised just about $5 million to date. Have a great agreement with Mayo Clinic. Just had a wonderful FDA pre-sub meeting. Thanks to Chris, we're actually about to go to New Zealand to do our first clinical trials. Uh, I've actually swallowed more than 24 of these pill bots since we founded the company. And the basic premise here is, you know, let's create a world where tiny little robots can do medicine inside the human body we think that's going to be an amazing market category, but there is a 40 to $70 billion market uh, for traditional endoscopes. And we think that PillBot is going to be the world's first virtual endoscope. So thanks for uh, giving me a second to talk about little robot pills that swim in your stomach. And I'd love to hear any questions. Perfect. Sounds exciting. Uh, dear Sharks, do you have any questions? I thought it was just an awesome pitch. It's really far outside our mandate, but you know, I've, I've probably heard a thousand pitches since starting at BDEV. It's actually tracked on Gong, so it's pretty reliable. And it, it's rare that you can just understand what someone's doing really clearly off the bat and have it be such a big and transform transformational idea. So great job, but outside our mandate, unfortunately. Great. One shark is out. We have our Pete raised hands. Like, let's see what, what he says. <laughs> No, I'm resonating with Connor, really good pitch. So I'm curious, how does the, so the robot goes in, but how does the robot come out? Or well, does, it's only does active. It stay in? That's right. So it's active for five to 15 minutes, uh, and then we permanently turn it off. 
our value is the live video feed, just like a normal endoscope, but through telemedicine. After that, uh, it goes out when you go to the bathroom and it ends up in a screen at the landfill, goes to a proper disposal after that. Okay, interesting. Are there any risks to the robot getting stuck in the system or have you had any? Well, any FDA just uh, expressed a huge amount of interest in this platform. We're really getting helped that people have been swallowing normal pill cameras for about 25 years. PillBot looks a lot like a pill camera with the exception that it squirts water in order to swim around in your stomach. That's kind of our differentiation. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Chow, do you have questions? I, if, no, I have to say this is way out of my circle of competence. I don't, it, it sounds really good. The pitch is really nice. You make it really clear. It just like, I I don't really know how customer react and how, how that potentially goes. It just way out of my circle of competence. Thank you so much. We uh, have a big know-how agreement with Mayo Clinic. We have most of the top gastroenterologists on board so far, but unless you're a GI, you might not necessarily be a customer for PillBot. Perfect. There are some investors in the chat uh, asking you to share your contacts. Uh, they want to connect with you. And I uh, I saw the pitch of Tori at uh, one of the uh, pitch events in Palo Alto, and uh, they actually did a demonstration live uh, right on the stage. That was fantastic. <laughs> Such an experience. Great product and great presentation. Well, uh, thank, thank you. you so much. Appreciate that. The next presenter is Andres Camacho. Uh, Andres, are you here? Are you ready? Yes. Hello. Yeah, you got two minutes and you may start now. Okay. Hello, Sharks. Uh, my name is Andres. I'm the CFO of eSipo Technology. Uh, do you know what a blue ocean is? I mean, a red ocean is. It's actually a place full of competitors, a place where everybody's fighting for the big fish, which in our industry are the big companies like the Nestle, the L'Oreal, the Colgate. It's also a place that is full of price wars. Not very attractive, do you think? Now, I myself, I'm a swimmer, and I love to swim, especially in spacious and clear water. And that's what a blue ocean is. In an industry that's worth over $220 million, and where 97% are micro and small-sized businesses, and they're constantly being ignored. Did you know that over 85% of them want to enter the digital transformation era, but they can? Either they don't meet the minimum requirements set forth by the current solutions in the market, or they can't afford them. And that's why we as CCPO decided to help them out. We develop our patented software that is fully adaptable and customizable and affordable for micro and small size businesses. We want to help them start visualizing their data in real time, start making smart decisions, and optimize their overall processes. And why not also help save some trees while we're at it by reducing and hopefully eliminating paper documents? And if that doesn't get you excited, well, we're already making over $85,000 in revenue, and we're making over $15,000 in profit too. Thus, we welcome you to join us in taking a swim in this beautiful blue ocean opportunity by investing $147,000 in order for us to keep upgrading our software and to continue our AI development. Thank you for your time. Well done. Congrats. Uh, dear Sharks, uh, what do you think? Anyone? Uh, no, uh, in that case, I'll, I'll kick it off. Uh, I guess I guess like there's many uh similar I don't know similar many uh companies in this uh, startup in the same uh track that I've been going over in the past few months, like all of them claiming trying to be digitizing uh uh and helping SMBs just to help them like onboarding analyzing some even using machine learning to provide insights. So what is your differentiator? You mentioned some of the pattern pending. Can you give a highlight? Like what is your differentiator needs? Yes, uh, very good question. Well, we've been, um, our, our, our entire team has uh, combined uh, over 100 uh, years of experience. And most of it has been in uh, small businesses. So we fully understand uh, what the issues are, what the problems are. And we've created our software based on the necessities. So therefore it is almost 
fully adaptable and customizable to what their needs are. Um, so that's that's what our software is. And we've made it in a way that it's also very affordable. Thus, that's why it is uh, very attractive to the market. Uh, as far as the patent side of things goes, uh, it's basically the AI modules that we're creating. Um, uh, it's basically on separate uh, sides of the business. So it has uh, like uh, financial models to try to add some machine learning into optimizing your overall accounts and uh, your overall account accounting. Uh, on the logistics side, um, about safety, about route optimization. So it's uh, different modules uh, that we offer. All right. Thank you. Uh, and any of the sharks interested to connect with Andres uh, for further follow up or anything? Okay, Andres, great job, great presentation. Uh, uh, and thank you. Uh, please share your information here in the chat. Uh, we'll, some other investors may be interested to connect. And the next uh, uh, next startup to present is Imad Aid El Rabi. Uh, I see Imad, Imad already in, uh, no, <laughs> is uh, smiling and ready. So Imad, you may start now. You got two minutes. Yeah. Thank. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, so sorry, my English is so English is the third language in my country here. So I will try my hard to explain you the um, the the project. So I'm Imad, the co-founder of Buff Cloud. Uh, as I noticed that around 90% of the, the founders here in the today's event offering AI solutions. So I believe that they have software developers that implement in their AI features. And also I noticed that most of the sharks are interested in AI startups. So Buff Cloud can be used from any startup development team to quickly deliver AI features because it's an, uh, an AI factory platform that make it super easy to manage AI projects. Uh, think of it as a one-stop shop for AI development. Uh, our platform is packed with thousands of AI models for different tasks. Uh, it's a simple to pick and fine tune or deploy a model. Plus we have got this cool AI agent library. It's like a catalog where developers can pick an AI agent that fits their projects and hook it up using our API. We are all about to making life easier for developers working on, on AI projects. Our MVP is already out and we have got a waitlist going. We are planning to launch the beta version by the end of January. Uh, and we have already gave five clients access to our platform from the waitlist. Now about money stuff, we are still figuring out the, the, the best pricing plans, but there's the good news that we already got uh, 25K from Microsoft and uh, we are about to get uh, 100k 25k more this means we can let our client test our platform for free it's a great way for us to see how much it costs uh, to run buff cloud to run buff cloud and came up with a fair price for everyone so that's buff cloud uh, we are making ai development as simple as it gets with love we would love to for you to be part of this so yeah. if you have any questions i will be here to to answer you right on time right on time uh and yeah, dear sharks exactly. who wants to go first any questions uh is there any interest in this project okay reese would you like to go are uh, you are muted uh. <laughs> sorry i'm trying to protect everyone from my barking dog uh, <laughs> but uh, but um anyway uh good presentation uh, my question for you is there's lots of different kinds of developers. Like, what are the uh, you know what are the developers you're targeting? What kind of applications, you know, for enterprise, for consumer? And, you know, any more you could say would be really helpful. Yeah, Buff Cloud is basically targeted to developers who are working in teams. I believe that most of the teams currently in organization are implementing AI, so they usually use currently OpenAI, I think, to to integrate or to build AI features. So I believe that the the most of 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 um, of uh, developers uh, uh, in in the organizations like uh, can use our platform. So that's why I believe. So so there is not really a, a 
uh, targeted uh, kind of developers because we are just offering an API that most of developers are familiar with. Exactly. Uh, any other question? All right. Is there yeah. anyone interested to connect with Emats uh, or anything else? Okay. Thank you, Matt. Good job. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Sharks. Uh, are your details okay. here in the chat. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, I will. Uh, uh, dear investors, I have a question to you, quick one. Um, how are you feeling? Do you have any short uh, feedback uh, to uh, uh, to our startups uh, based on the, uh, the pitches you've heard? Like uh, maybe you want them to actually emphasize on something. I would like uh, I would really like some focus on what's different about your company than others out there. I think differentiation from competitors is critically important uh, when you're pitching. And also, and most of you've done a really good job of this, but you know, get to the problem you're solving and your solution quickly, so we understand the field of play. Perfect. Everyone heard. We have one hour more for the for for the pitches, and so this is the opportunity to make it even better. Uh, anyone else? Just giving us a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree with Reese. Uh, I think one thing is a, a lot of the founder over here are trying the two minutes is really limited, so they try their best to use the two minutes to make clear about their pro problem definitions. But the thing is, uh, a lot of similar startup on the same track, so it would be hard to let us judge, like differentiating, like how good you are. It would be it would be really good if you can like trying to shrink the problem definition and the solution and add a, a sentence or two about the differentiation or like any highlight or anything. That would be that would be super helpful. Thank you. Thank you. The next presenter is Ma Maxwell Dordevic. Maxwell, are you, are you ready? Please turn on your camera. You can. Oh, yeah. There we go. That, that, uh, there we go. Hey, great to meet you guys. Um, I'll, I'll make this as brief as I can. So we are a, um, Get to of drug discovery startup and Eric, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah you okay. got to me. Cool. Okay, good, good. Okay. So we're a generative drug discovery startup with the emphasis on neurological disease. So um, we optimize for things like blood brain barrier permeability, neurotoxicity, things like that, um, basically to expedite the sort of preclinical drug discovery process and then um, you know getting neurotherapeutics into the the uh, you know clinical phase of development as you know fast as possible for uh you know sort of the lowest uh you know reasonable reasonable uh you know r d expenditure so uh ultimately what we do is we we design therapeutics for things like uh, alzheimer's ms uh, als um and then once we have done some uh you know work with our platform we take it to the clinic synthesize those compounds uh, gather the preclinical data we need and then partner those drug assets off to a pharma partner so a, a lily or a merck or a pfizer um, who then takes the clinical development risk. Um, uh, from like a business uh, perspective, the um, uh, pretty standard biotech business model where it's an upfront payment followed by milestones and royalties. So if your compound gets, uh, you know, has really good phase one data, you know, you'll get a, you know, let's say $10 million. If it, if, you know, phase two, maybe double that phase three, you know, it, it, it gets, you know, sort of exponentially larger. Um, if your drug gets approved, you get a royalty up to a certain cap or until the patent expires. Um, and right now we, we have a handful of collaborations with uh, some academic uh, institutions with Cambridge in the UK and then MD Anderson's. So we're working on some uh, brain cancer uh, compounds. And then uh, we have three private um, sort of joint uh, venture co-development deals on everything from a handful of pediatric road disease um, targets to MS, to stroke. So um, we've raised 2.1 to date, currently raising a uh, $1.5 million seed. And yeah, that's, uh, that's where we are now. Team of eight, my background's in stem cell biology. Um, so biologic small molecules, uh, sort of on the wet lab side, co-founder is a, a physicist who spent his time at Livermore doing uh, GPU optimization. Um, over there and then uh, GPU code optimization. And then uh, his brother is our third co-founder and he is a um, pure math and uh, very gifted software engineer 
And then uh, the rest of the team is sort of a mix of comp chemists, comp biologists, and uh, mathematicians. Thank you, thank you. Fun fact about Max, we met with him in San Francisco and in New York. And uh, when this guy started talking uh, with people about his uh, technology, about biotech, everyone surrounds him because he's like high level, like very, very much science, super like interesting conversations. So dear Sharks, do you have any questions uh, to Max? Just super quickly, Max, great job. It's far outside our scope, but I uh, wanted to say a great job. Well done. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. One shark is out. What about the rest of the sharks? Zichel? Oh, uh, Reese? Uh, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, very good presentation, but that's it's just not an area that we invest in. But um, I'm sure you know who the right companies to target. I, I therapeutics is an interesting is an interesting space. But um, no, I, I appreciate the feedback. That means a lot. Um, and if any of you guys are in SF for, for JPM Healthcare, we'd love to connect. And anybody in the you know, the surround, you know, periphery of this, you know, uh, if you're, if you're going to JPM in the second week of January, happy to connect in. Uh, RT, did you no, it's a similar conclusion on my side. I'm sorry. Like the, the pitch was really nice, but it's just out of my comfort zone. It's out of my, like, I don't really have uh understanding on the biotech and health tech. So it's, uh, it's not the area for me. Okay. Thank you. RP? No, all good. But I, I, hey, I appreciate the feedback nonetheless. And, and you guys rock and, you know, appreciate you, you, you hosting the event. Uh, no, I'll see you guys in, uh, I'll drive down to San Mateo or something. Yeah, we have Arpit as well. Arpit, what's, what, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I would love to connect. Uh, I think medical tech is a big part of our practice. And one of the things to differentiate it at URAS is having those uh, board certified doctors on the team who, who obviously understand a lot more about this than I do. I, I understand just evaluation. So would love to connect, learn more. Sure. Perfect. So um, there is one match. There is one shark is interesting. Congratulations. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll ping you in the thing. Yeah. We will do a, a form intro. Why email you don't want, you don't need to. Oh, great. It. Today or tomorrow. So we will okay. do that. Thank you so much. You have cool. a great one and uh, share your Thanks. comments in the chat. The next presenter is Michael Leon. Michael, are you there? Yep. I am here. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, Daniel. Okay, you've got two minutes and you may start. Um, thank you. appreciate it. So we are GunSense. We are a team of six serial entrepreneurs uh, with uh, about a dozen exits between us. And we are solving the global pandemic of gun violence and mass shootings. Um, we currently are shipping uh, pilot units out to uh, schools, uh, B2B uh, and SaaS model. We use AI vision in a fully autonomous, so no back end uh, requirement, no human intervention, it lives indoors and outdoors. So um, currently we uh, see out about 100 feet at 190 degrees of vision, and we're looking for the presence of a weapon where a weapon doesn't belong. Once we detect that weapon uh, in sub one second, we send an alert out via FirstNet, which is a government proprietary network only available for first responders. We send out a piece of metadata that includes longitude, latitude, and a Z axis. That gets bounced off of our cloud once it goes to 911, and it comes back as an amber alert that is uh, a map and a floor plan showing exactly where the uh, threat is coming from where it's been and where it's going so today um we are looking for a, a five million dollar round we still have uh, an a round excuse me um, we still have 250 left 250k left in our seed um at uh, uh, 10 million valuation and uh, our roadmap is about five years long. We're in discussions with uh, uh, government, military, for mobile and wearable devices. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, it sounds exciting. Series, uh, you're preparing for Series A, and there is a small allocation for C. Okay, yes, Sharks, your question. Who wants to start? Zichel, you usually start. Sure. Uh, like. And uh, I actually have the opportunity to go over this uh, earlier already. So uh, like, uh, I do like the idea. I totally support that. It's just on my side, I'm not able to see like the potential market that is large enough to justify the later race. Uh, I hope I'm wrong, but I, 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 I think I'm out. 
Perfect. One shark is out, and we have three more sharks. Uh, and you, do you guys have any questions? Are you uh, agree with the problem, or are you out? I'm curious to learn more about the product, how exactly the product works, and the false triggers, because I'm sure there's going to be instances in which you know, people who are trying to be miscreants could plant some sort, sort of false triggers, which creates unnecessary pressure on the you know the emergency response system. So how is the government thinking about it? How are you thinking about it? Um, yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd love to learn more. Yeah, so it uses three vision systems. So uh, a standard 4K camera, uh, IR, and then it uses um, a time of flight, like a LIDAR system. Um, our AI is very unique. Watson came to us from IBM and said, if uh, your AI is what we hear it is, it's a revolution for AI programming in general. So currently today, we are about 99.2% accurate um, and it is fully autonomous. So in regard to the, the, the space, um, we are projecting about a million units in year three um, uh, for that, uh, uh, for the um, verticals that we're currently in. Okay, are you selling anything right now? So we're shipping uh, pilot units uh, starting this month and next month. Uh, we have several schools. Uh, we're in negotiations with um, uh, Quickie Mart, 7-Elevens, uh, gas stations, uh, general B2B office locations as well. Um, the, the market is absolutely massive. We are in contract with T-Mobile already. Uh, Verizon and AT&T are right behind that, Motorola. Um, is right behind that as well. Um, we have several Fortune 100, Fortune 250 companies who want to partner with us and OEM it. Um, uh, we are in uh, contract already with TD Cynics, which is a $74 billion uh, distribution IT network infrastructure company. And um, uh, we're ready to go to market by uh, first quarter of uh, next year. We'll be profitable, or, excuse me, we'll be cash flow positive by the end of the year and profitable by Q1, Q2 of 25. Thank you so much for that. Uh, it's a very, very good, crunchy, concise pitch. Appreciate it. We'd love to connect. Perfect. There is one in, and uh, thank you so much. Any more questions before I take the next entrepreneur? Not for me. I mean, I just, I, it's outside of our scope, but I, I sure hope you're very, very successful. We need thank it. You. Appreciate it. Fantastic. Yeah, definitely we need it. And the news uh, so far are not so pleasant. So your technology would be saving the world. Uh, please share your information in the chat so more investors can connect uh, with you, especially share your GGW profile. And we'll connect you with our Pete after the event today or tomorrow. The next presenter is Yang Song uh, from Spatio Studio. Yang Song, uh, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Yang. Uh, uh, we are Fatia Studio, a AI powered Figma for spatial design. So spatial design basically means architecture, interior, or exterior. So I want to start with a little bit about myself. So I got my PhD specifically in image generation, and I later joined Apple as a senior research scientist who delivered a key feature in the Apple Vision Pro. And also, I do a lot of set projects. I like to purchase cabin and remodel it and list on Airbnb. So that gave me a, a chance to know a lot of designer. And I realized they really don't have a tool like automatic general design or communicate with customer. So I start to develop the tool for them. Then I like launch my product and organically have 400 users sign that. So I decided to turn that to be a business. So to summarize the main point, like pain point for spatial design industry are three. First, they don't have a, a, a useful way to acquire customer. Like they don't like they only like salesperson only works nine hours, five days. And second is like the entire design work is labor intensive, time consuming and iterative. Like uh, it takes mass. And third is is quite rely on human capability. So if the designer not, cannot come up with good design and customer leave. So we provide a kind of end-to-end uh, -end solution like from pre-sale engagement, automatically gen design, 
all the way to the final implementation. So our product, which we already launched, have a AI agent who keep the customer 24 hours, seven days, and it can like journey design immediately. Imagine you take a picture of your room and send that, and it will, based on what your style, your, your like texture, you choose a general design before you choose the design firm. Second is like, we have a design called Palette. So the designer no need to like, generate from a uh, SketchUp or C CD to start with 3D, it generates the design automatically, uh, uh, like, yes. And also like we have budget control tool. And like to some, uh, our business model is like, we sell B2B SaaS for small business and we charge them uh, 10K annually and there are 500K home improvement company. So the time is 5 billion, but generally like uh, we provide rendering service, the rendering or interior design Ninth uh, market is already thirty billion dollars, and we are looking for a pre-seed round, which is one to one point five million, to bring us to the next uh, two milestone. And a little bit about differentiate. So we are the technical expert, like uh, doing two D three D generation, and I also potentially collaborate with my PhD advisor, like they are doing research specifically in this area. And also we do have an advisor, like they're the industry people, like specifically from like house or a CED person doing like the design, developing the design software. Yes, that's it. Perfect. Uh, great presentation, dear Sharks. Any questions? Uh, who would like to start? Mm. Uh, uh, one thing is, uh, I think the presentation is really good. It, it gave a pretty clear understanding at it. And it's really amazing how it packs so many things in a short amount of time. But one thing I still wanted to follow up is, like I wanted to see, because there are competitors on the road, I want to see how you differentiate. The only thing that I catch so far is you have several hundred trial users at the beginning, right? So like mm -hmm. if there's any additional tractions or like anything that you get just to prove that you have some potential market fit, Yes, we are going to sign a contract, which like is a, a design firm and we are charging them like a, a thousand monthly fee and we're going. So the 400 users are organically grow and we re, like we interview with them to refine the feature. So the current version we are going to launch have more features and we are like going to charge them. Yeah. So the number so far I don't have because we are going to do the market starting from this month. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's a little bit early for me, but I would love to follow up later just to see, like, once you have more uh, ARs or potential revenues, just uh, see how it goes. Uh, does it mean that we will connect you or, like, uh, you just... Uh, yeah, I think maybe you can just connect, but I'll prefer to follow along in later phase. Sure, okay. sure. And, uh, yeah, we can, like, send you more demo video online if you're interested. Sure. One shark is in. Congrats. And what about the rest of the sharks? Do uh, you guys have any interest? Okay. Thank you, Yang Song. Great presentation. Please share your uh, details. And uh, oh, uh, Connor, did you have? Oh, okay. I, I was just waving goodbye. I, I wanted to say it was a really clear presentation. I, I think when we look at the, the market and your ability to reach out to your potential buyers, we may not be the best partner in, in getting there. I mentioned that that's really our value add is go to market on the lead generation side. So something that I find really compelling, but maybe not the most compatible with our, our thesis. So wish you the best of luck and great job. Thank you. Thank you, Yang Sang. And the next uh, uh, person to present is uh, uh, German, German uh, Garces. Uh, German, you ready? Okay, you got two minutes. Um, to be uh, please, may, you may start. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I suppose you can, right? Um, so, all right. So there was a time not too long ago where the only way for people to like learn music or like actually play music was through, you know, these things, right? Um, like music sheet and like, um, you know, you buy this and hopefully um, you have a piano in your home and like um, you want to play that song so you get, you know, the person that your, your cousin or, you know, brother or sister who would like play the song because they knew how to play. So um, Unpossible app is a music platform that basically allows people to like learn um, music theory and songs through uh, challenges and um, 
and technology with like a uh, MIDI input through your keyboards or drum kits, electronic drum kits. Um, the problem that we have right now with like music is that it's it's hard. And it's not hard because it's super hard in the sense of like mentally. It's just because the uh, the barrier, like the mental barrier is really steep. So <clears throat> so what I want to do is just um, like have a platform where people um, uh, that measures up to people's skills and it's it's gonna be like a, the Wikipedia of music where everyone participates, like crowdsourcing challenges, um, songs, um, and it's gonna like um, coaches. I work for a, a a CRM company, and our clientele is mostly coaches. So it's like a good segment to focus on because, like, I know people can like uh, music teachers can um like sell their courses and use this platform as a as a tool and they can like pinpoint exactly the pain points of like you know um a, a student like you need to practice this measure you need to practice this the technology behind it is just um well German, you pass like, time. Uh, uh, please wrap this up with your final statement oh. yeah final statement is uh uh patreon like democratization of music perfect all right <laughs> very cool all right uh dear sharks any questions to them okay by the way you have a very nice uh, studio at the garage like real entrepreneur very beautiful <laughs> yeah. okay if oh, no thank you if no questions from the sharks uh please uh share your information uh for here in the chat for us entrepreneurs uh and uh yeah we'll, we can start from there thank you for for the presentation uh and uh, thank the, you thank you and the next person to present is jamie van doren from never ending jamie you there yeah i totally am i i was writing one of the other founders that i know to vcs <laughs> that i want to introduce her to so sorry um but yeah i so i can just Jump in if that's cool. Good to me. Yeah, you got two minutes. You may start. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so animation is a, a four hundred billion dollar market. It's it's actually twenty percent of the two trillion dollar animation market, but less than one percent of it is user. Uh, but less than one percent of user generated content is animated. And so why is there such a huge gap? It's because animation is difficult, it's time consuming, and it's much too expensive for the average person. Um, my name is Jamie Van Dorn. I'm the founder and CEO of NeverEnding. And we're building a platform where individuals and small teams will one day compete with major animation studios like Disney and Netflix. It's a web app where content creators can make, monetize, and share studio quality animated videos without the studio. With current tools, it takes on average 45 hours to create one minute of animated content. Worse, it costs $10,000 to $20,000 per minute. But using a video game engine and custom AI tools, we can reduce that time from 45 hours to one to two hours and the cost to $100 or, or even free. We already know creators are interested. We validate the market with just some basic 2D tools like an avatar creator, webcomic maker, animated avatars. And with minimal go to market, we've grown to over 38,000 users, close to 2,000 paid users. Uh, business model similar to Roblox, so it's uh, freemium for access to basic tools, subscriptions for access to advanced tools like AI video editing, as well as a third party marketplace where creators can collaborate and actually buy video creation assets from each other. As we grow, we'll expand into premium content, allowing users to put their best content behind a paywall. Our, our goal is to basically own and monetize the entire value chain. Now, what we're doing is personally meaningful to me. I'm Latino, I'm gay, I survived teen homelessness. And like my many minority and marginalized people, I, I just want to see more content that reflects my cultural lens and my personal experiences. And I believe NeverEnding is going to provide the tools to create that content and the space to consume it. In October, I recruited two co-founders. Our new CTO is formerly a director of engineering at Meta. Prior led the team who built and launched Amazon Prime Video's content suggestion engine. Uh, our new CEO was previously with Sony PlayStation, Amazon AWS, most recently was chief product owner for Toyota's infotainment system. So basically like Siri or Alexa, but for your car. 
We've identified a clear path to 100 million in annual reoccurring revenue, even though we're early stage. And I'd be happy to chat with you about our fundraising goals and answer any questions that you might have. Fantastic. So great to have you. And thank you for trying to connect uh, other entrepreneurs here. This is how entrepreneurs, okay. entrepreneurs, well done, well done. Dear Sharks, dear investors, any questions uh, to Jamie? Thanks, Jamie. What is the breakdown you see between the consumer side and the small teams you referenced on that path to 100 million ARR? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, there are about 200 million content creators worldwide, actually 207 million. 24 million of them make $25,000 a year or more. These are like the semi-pro to, to pro content creators. 14 million of them make $100,000 or, or more a year. They already spend money on digital tools, but their content is all focused on them. We literally need 192,000 paid users. Uh, at a monthly rate of $39.99 a year, plus a, a, a small like $10 a month uh, third party uh, marketplace purchase for us to hit 100 million ARR. So even without premium content, that is, that is literally 0.4% of the semi-pro pro content creators. So, and if, if God, if we can't hit 0.4%, then we have some bigger issues. Got it. Does that, it, it does for sure. And certainly a, a massive and growing market, one that we don't have the ability to reach out to from the business development standpoint. With that being said, wish you the best of luck and uh, look forward to following from afar. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the sharks? Uh, the market is also really interesting as of now for the for the one you're developing. Is uh the only thing that I was wondering is well, what is your traction so far? Like, yeah. uh, uh, and also the second thing is, like you mentioned about huge reduction time. Like I, I see some similar company doing similar things, but like it ultimately, like the designer have to design their avatars, design their animation, how they do. Like it's pretty hard to just saying shrinking forty five to just one hour, right? So even that designing phase. Like I wanted to understand a little bit more, like how does that huge reduction come from? Yeah, absolutely. So first, uh, to answer your first question around traction, we have about 38,000 users, uh, almost 2000 of those are paid. Uh, this year we've been growing by roughly 4% 4, 4 uh, month over month, almost. Oh, uh, you got muted, sorry. Uh... Yeah, I, that's okay. <laughs> our, uh, uh, our, Customer acquisition cost is less than 25 cents a, a user. Uh, in terms of how we're reducing that time, we're really taking a video game style approach. So you create your cast of characters just like you would in a video game, just selecting lots of different options. You place your characters into a world that you build out of our backgrounds, props, and creatures, or that you buy. And then similar to a video game, you're actually selecting from uh, well in a video game you know the developers are the ones that decide your animations with us you'll select pre-built animations that apply to your character everything from how they walk run sit to laugh and cry and you activate those with a keyboard controller so it's actually like playing a video game and it just screen captures and then we'll use ai to reduce the editing time which is where there's a lot of time happening um does that answer? I, I only have a short time to answer. Sure, sure. I want to make sure that. No, it's okay. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I would love to follow up on understanding more. This is the industry. Yeah. That, like, uh, exactly. uh, but there's way too many competitors, but I would love to understand it more. I, yeah, I would say that a lot of the competitors are focusing on the generative AI, AI. They're doing two things. They're focusing on the generative AI piece as the core for the content creation, which makes it much harder to commercialize and build a brand around and properly monetize because you, you can't copyright right, that AI generated content. The second mm -hmm. thing really quick is they're focusing not on content creators, but more pro creators like like studios and, and indie, uh, indie film studios. And I think that that's a more expensive place to grow. The bottom of the pyramid provides a lot more monetization opportunities and a faster path to growth. Sorry, Daniel. No, no, good, good job. Like uh, you, the passion here is just uh, so good. So well done, man. Uh, thank uh, so thank you so much. We will uh, definitely connect you with Zichao. And uh, with that, please share your information here in the chat. And we 
we got to give some more entrepreneurs an opportunity to pitch. Uh, and thank you for your uh, energy in here. Appreciate that. And Vladislav Shapelo, uh, are you ready, Vladislav? Yep. Okay, you got two minutes. You may start. Hi there. Uh, my name is Vladislav Shapilo, uh, and I'm presenting KAI product. Our solution is aimed to help people who have lost their crypto assets. Um, we're talking about quite a huge part of the uh, crypto holders. Do some estimations? It can be from ten to twenty percent of the entire um, crypto market volumes. KI is a neural network based application for restoring assets um, of the crypto wallets. Currently, we have a prototype that shows good results, but for the first uh, test in a field, we require um, training our neural network on a kind of pretty uh, massive data. And this is the main point of pricing funds. Our solution is quite flexible and on further steps we will be possible. It will be possible to apply our neural network on different blockchains. Uh, and last point is our business model is based on taking a fee from the restored accounts. So um, we are interested in uh, making successful cases and we are getting paid only when we are done our job. Thank you for the attention and uh, questions are welcome. Thank you. Right on time. Dear Sharks, so would you have any questions to Vladislav? Anyone? Okay. Uh, Vladislav, appreciate that. Uh, uh, good presentation. And uh, uh, please share your information here in the chat, especially your digital profile, so you can connect with more investors uh, and keep pitching us. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me here. Thank you. And the next presenter is Ning uh, Pentai. Ning, uh, are you there? That's interesting. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. You may start now. You've got two minutes. Okay. So first thing, I actually put my LinkedIn profile uh, in the link. Oh, sorry, I cannot send out directly. Your time is already now. You can uh, you can do it later. Sure. So uh, I'm currently in the Singapore, and now it's approximately 4 a.m. What we actually do is an AI fund manager as a plug-in offer to family office, asset management, and banks. And uh, in all the people here, I actually have spoken with the BDEF before, but uh, I think we will still need nine months to meet their mandate. Still need nine months. So current, so uh, how to say, uh, we actually joined the ETHM cohort four months ago, and then that time we actually are uh, pre-revenue. And now we have the signed, we have signed with a family office and also banks. And uh, our committed AUM to let the uh, AI to manage is already reached out to 120 million US dollar. And then realized in 12 months to 34 months. And what we actually provide the value for them. We provide AI fund manager for them so that they don't need to rely on human fund manager. And the multi generation of office is actually targeted on the Euro mandate. And then the bank is targeted on the Islam market. Islam Sharia market. So we also partner with the Sharia advisor. And then we just back from the Middle East and also build some connection in the, because for us, the Islam, Islam market don't have enough fund managers. Islam market don't have enough fund managers. So we use AI to provide fund manager. That's what we do. And uh, so uh, we actually consider as a artificial specialized intelligence. And uh, we spend most of the effort is on the data processing and big data. So yeah, that's what we do. Currently, we are raising uh, 5 million US dollar, minimum tickets are 500,000. Uh, but uh, I'm, but I think we actually call, has been rejected by more than 100 VCs already. So for me, that I understand the mandate of all this thing and geography region, we are in the Singapore, not in the US. So, um, and also that uh, the, uh, how to say, I was just say, actually last week, there is one VC, they reject us and then the LP go to ask them, hey, why you reject us? And the answer is, we don't understand their business, which means fund management is a very special, uh, very specialized industry. Not a lot of people understand. So we offer AI to replace uh, some of the part of the human fund manager. Thank you. Thank you. Right on time. Well, uh, not every entrepreneur would say this honestly that they were rejected by hundred VCs, and I re really appreciate the honesty and uh, our transparency in here. And thank you for being with us uh, till four a.m. Like really, really, like real entrepreneur. Dear, dear Sharks, 
Uh, do you have any questions to him? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's just me or just like, uh, or anything. It, it, it just one quick feedback is you mentioned a lot of details. I catch some of the detail. I have a vague sense of what you were doing, but I just, I, I don't know if it's just me, but I didn't really get it. I didn't really get what you were doing. What 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 is your? Can you say again? Like, what is your product? What are you aiming for? I will use another way to say. It. I will say another way is I will assume you are my target client. Okay. So if I assume you are my target client, what I actually offer to you is a AI fund manager to help you to invest in the market. But you have to be a high-level individual or you have to be family office or either it's asset management or banks. So what the advantage that you get is you get a AI that is better than a lot of the human manager. And the most important part is the AI follow your mandate. You want to invest where? Europe, Japan, US, or any location with any specific mandate, then the AI will actually serve you, specialized for your investment perception. So quick question, are you focused on certain asset classes or are you agnostic? So where are you investing? What's your portfolio theory? Yeah, at this moment, we only focus on the equity markets. So which means if you as a client want to invest on us, at this moment, we don't offer bond, we don't offer commodities. It's a pure equity investment and only long buy and hold, which means that AI are doing investment only, not trading, no speculation, no margin uh, account. Is purely AI do the stock selection and beat the index. And our Northern Star is you can expect a two times better than index. Okay. And uh, yeah, I would love to connect on that. I used to be a quantitative analyst at JPM. Um, I, got to, I, I mean, I have several questions, technical questions on this. Are you focusing on top down, bottom up? What's your multi regression approach? What's your fundamental screening, technical screening, all those things? But we'd love to connect with us. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. So one shark is in. Appreciate that. Uh, and uh, uh, please share your details here in the chat, especially your Google Board profile. And uh, we'll start from there. And the next and the probably uh, maybe the final presenter for today is uh, Oriel uh, from Remote AI. Uh, Oriel, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thanks, Anil. Yeah, you got two minutes. Hi, everyone. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me here. I'm Ariel, a CEO founder at Primordial AI. Uh, let's talk uh, about our common friend, Daniel. Just imagine that Daniel has to refresh or want to refresh his kitchen with a remodeling project in modern style. The usual way to do this is to make an appointment with an architect or maybe an interior designer. Uh, this professional have to go to Daniel's house, take pictures, take measurements, talk to Daniel to understand the, his project ideas, styles, uh, colors, etc. But what about if I tell you that there is a much more efficient way to do this? What about if I tell you that Daniel can take a picture, could take a picture with his cell phone, I have a complete remodeling project within seconds. But that is not only a design proposal. Imagine that Daniel can access to a budget, list of labor, list of materials, and also financial for his project. That is what we are, we are doing in remodel AI. So we are going to connect all the data from remodeling value change for remodelings, and uh, we are going to connect all the value chains in Latin America and maybe with your help in the United States. So, Sharks, uh, do you want to learn more about remodel AI? Let's talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Right on time. Uh, dear Sharks, uh, do you have any questions to Ariel? Uh, like I have a similar question I asked earlier uh, to other company. Is this a U.S. based company? I check on the web page. It's all, all Spanish. Yes, we are in fundraising, so we we incorporate in Delaware as a C corp to to fundraise. But we are going to we we are launching in Mexico, but we we have 
uh, some interested in go to United States to, as soon as possible. Okay, okay. In that case, maybe I'll wait for the later phase just to understand you more. Um, I think I'm out for now. All right, thank you. Okay. About Ariel, uh, I think we met in uh, Mexico City at some pitch event, and uh, I'm glad to have him in here. Yeah. Yeah. It was in BBO, we are Francis in the, in the, in the back. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, Daniel, for the opportunity. Please share your details here in the chat. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 thank you for your presentation. Uh, and if any of the other investors would be interested, we'll definitely be happy to connect. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, to the sharks, uh, we have two more hands uh, raised uh, to pitch. Uh, would you be uh, uh, okay if we let these people to pitch because we are about to be past time? I'm not sure if you can make it on time. Are you okay with that? Yeah, good on me. Like depends. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Perfect. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Then uh, the next presenter is uh, uh, Obina Innocent uh, from Influencer FX. Obina, are you there? You got two minutes. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm here. Uh, SFX is a fintech uh, in Turkey, building the money app for African students. And the money app for African students is a stablecoin app that enables instant payments and money transfers for African students living in Turkey. So there are over 112,000 African students in Turkey, and they make over about sorry about 95 percent of them do not own a bank account and they make over about 1.5 billion us dollars yearly in tuition fee payments and over 220 220 million us dollars in rental payments yearly in turkey now sfx was part of the cellu camp um eight uh, cohorts building for mini pay and in this cellu camp we managed to build a cusd wallet to enable mini pay users in Africa to be able to send CUSD to their loved ones in Turkey. And mini pay has about 1 million users in Nigeria, about a million users in Kenya, and recently launched in Ghana with over 500,000 users. Yeah. SFX, the SFX money app, the SFX money app stands out because it empowers African students in Turkey in this region to be able to forget about the high fees they expend, they experience in sending money from Africa to Turkey, one, and also bank them, enable them to be able to make US, USD payments, saving USD, and also send USD uh, money transfers to their friends. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Sharks, uh, do you have any questions to Abina? Anyone interested in their project? Okay, uh, Abina, thank you for your presentation uh, and uh, thank you for being part of our final pitch of the year. Please share your details here in the chat. If there are more investors, uh, we'll be looking at your project. And uh, now we are taking the final presenter uh, of this uh, uh, GGW Shark, Brett Jones from Mick Kingsters. Brett, are you there? Oh, I can see you. Are you ready? You got two minutes and you may start now. Yes, sir. Thanks, Daniel, and uh, thanks to everybody for going a little overtime. Uh, Brad Jones here from Meet Kinksters. I promise I will give you a fun last pitch. You know, online dating has a rap as being a tar pit, and mainstream dating is a tar pit idea. However, there are uh, overlooked verticals in this space, particularly uh, when we talk about the sex positive space. And a lot of VCs and institutional money are afraid of touching this area for many legitimate reasons, but many, many more uh, reasons that uh, I think uh, overlook this gold mine of a niche. We are empowering people to form relationships that are both sexually and romantically compatible uh, at the outset. And this is, uh, like I said, a very overlooked niche in this space. And uh, people around the world, I don't have to tell you, are becoming more and more sexually uh, liberated, and they are an untapped, uh, very large market. Uh, we also have a approach that avoids a lot of the critical mass and leaky bucket 
uh, challenges that plague a lot of social connection startups. We have over 4,200 fully registered spam filtered users on zero marketing spend. Uh, we're raising a $500,000 round to really get to some critical mass in key markets. Uh, we've got an exciting marketing plan laid out uh, for some organic marketing in the spring and uh, a exciting uh, complimentary business line around educational content. So uh, this is an atypical investment for a lot of VCs, but like I said, this is an overlooked uh, area that is ripe for competition. Thanks. Thank you. And that was the final pitch uh, for today and the final questions from the Sharks. What do you guys have to say to Brad? Anyone? Okay, Pichel, okay. Do you have any? Oh, uh, yeah. I think actually like I have something similar in my portfolio already. And uh, I feel like the market is tough uh, for this industry. So, Yes, it is. Could I ask what your portfolio company is? Uh, it is Pearl. Pearl or Pure? Pearl. Pearl. All right. I haven't heard of them. I'll check it out. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So one shark is out. Uh, Connor, you had a question. No, didn't didn't have a question, but going out with a bang, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I, I think uh, definitely outside our scope, but we love to keep things interesting and, and hear new ideas. So appreciate you coming forth and uh, great presentation. Nice, nice, clear and concise. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and I guess uh, there are more no, no more questions from the Sharks. Brad, great presentation. Definitely put some emotions here up. And uh, please share some details of yours uh, here in the chat. We are grateful for you being here. And this is, um, this is the moment where actually we are on time, and I'm really glad. Uh, this is the moment when we are closing our uh, uh, global GGW Sharks pitch event. And uh, this uh, this is the time where you guys would share your final statement, whatever you have on your heart and mind, uh, whatever you want entrepreneurs to remember as the final outcome of uh, GGW Shark 35th of this final uh, uh, pitch of the year. Uh, this is your moment to share and say some final good words, words of wisdom or whatever you have. Connor, would you like to go first? Yeah, I think for, for our fund, we're, we're Pretty much a generalist fund we invest across a number of industries so this may be different for a fund that's very specialized in a specific industry but i think it's important to remember that u.s founders are the experts and sometimes you need to kind of dumb it down for for the investors for us to fully understand the concept so keeping it simple which you've probably heard a million times is key but i think even going a step further and trying to upfront explain it like it's like you're explaining to a five-year-old, I think can be really, really helpful to just understand the idea because there's often assumptions of what we know. And again, maybe different for different groups of investors, but keep keep that in mind when you do go pitch any idea. Keep it simple at first and then dive into the nitty gritty once there's, there's questions on specific technology. That's all I got. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate that. Great having you and we'll be glad to have you again. Arpit, what do you have to say? Sure. Uh, congratulations to all the presenters. I think you, the, the, the amount of time you had, I think you all did really well. Uh, just a key a piece of advice, you know, don't get discouraged by feedback for the investors or whether or not how the investors are responding. I think investors are, especially VCs, have a very, a lot of times, very specific general criteria on how they're looking at their firms. And it has nothing to do with your business model, just the mandate that VC have uh, for investing. Um, so just because a VC says no it does not mean anything. Uh, hopefully a lot of us here would be proven wrong. Uh, and you know, a lot of times, you know, one of, one of the things you want to focus on is uh, I see a lot of especially enthusiastic uh, uh, entrepreneurs who are passionate about the product, focus on how the VCs make money out of it. So and how, how can you de-risk the VCs basically, right? I think if you focus on that, help them see a clear cut plan, easy execution. So execution is what really, really comes down to. So laying out a clear, easy plan that you can execute and be this them, I think that's a key. Thank you so much. It would be exciting to have you in the 2024 again with us and uh, great feedback. Ji Chao, uh, 
what's your feedback uh, uh, whatever you have on your mind and heart <laughs> yeah like i totally agree with uh connor and a pretty like uh, a pretty like uh, a bit like uh, it, it just have two comments is one is uh, i kind of feel like you have to uh it's actually pretty challenging a lot of founders did a really good job like without pitch, pitch deck like only two minute limitation to explain the problem as well as show what their advantage is so it's been really challenging already but uh, i still wanted to poke a little bit more saying like you can think of think of a way to explain the idea better because like at least for me there's so many things that i don't really know and a lot of things i have to do a little bit of research to back myself up so it's been pretty challenging for me uh, sometimes to catch up with the idea if the problem is not clearly defined and lay out to me so like last event i remember we have 11 pitches in total and this time we have 20 pitches in total because like i feel like some of them in the middle i got lost it i have to google and check their web page and understanding what their product actually is so uh, i kind of feel like if there's a way to explain a little bit better uh just uh, it, it'll be way better because uh there's so many we don't really know as uh, uh like earlier was saying already we can be wrong like 90 percent plus per, uh, percent of the time so yeah but anyway, uh, really good pitches and good luck with all the founders. Thank you. Great to have you again and fantastic uh, uh, feedback. And happy to see you in our next pitch events. Chris, uh, this is my honor to give you uh, the chance to close our global uh, final pitch of the year. And uh, uh, your feedback and your expertise is very valuable for us to hear. You bet. First of all, to all of you who presented, I mean, it takes a lot of guts to present to you know a body like this you know virtual panel here and um you know do it in front of so many people and uh, i really admire all of you for being able to do that overall the pitches were really good you know i'd reiterate reiterate you know i'm with uh, an insurance company and we're very strategic so that does limit the scope of what you know what we can invest in so, um, you know, don't take my lack of interest in, in, you know, some of them that the company is, you know, not interesting. It's just not a fit for us. Um, but, but overall, I think everybody did a great job. And, and again, just to reiterate what, what everybody's saying, I think really quickly, you got two minutes. Um, what's the problem? What's the solution? How do you solve it and why you're doing it better than anybody else? And I think if you can get that across really quick, hard and fast, you're going to be successful. I wish everybody out there a very, very happy holiday season and a terrific 2024. Thank you so much. A great presentation. Great to have you, Reese, and uh, looking forward to see you now on future pitch events. Well, guys, I think we nailed this. It was fantastic year. It was. Uh, a great pitch today, but the overall we have over 5,000 people participated just this year and we've got, even today, we've got 15 matches and I think about 500 matches throughout the year. It's amazing how many connect to Quest or uh, connect uh, with investors we've done uh, here today and uh, in the previous events. So I wish everyone uh, great holidays, uh, enjoy your Christmas, enjoy your families, enjoy your new year. And uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for talking about us. So we don't have to pay Google and Facebook for bringing you up in here. It's, it's, really, uh, it's really been a tough year for everyone. And I wish all of you investors to have a better access to capital and to invest in startups. Great deal flow. I uh, you, wish you startups and founders you to have access to the best and the right investors right on time to help your businesses grow. We are there to help you. We are there with our technology and with our platform. With me here uh, today, uh, is, there is my team, Anna, uh, Pei Hank, and there are many others. And we'll keep reaching out to you with some more news uh, uh, by the end of this year, giving you some more love and more uh, opportunities to connect with investors. So with that said, Keep, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Let's change the world together. We love you all. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and take care of yourself. Goodbye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.